Welcome to an introduction to congruence modulo n. Every integer is in exactly one remainder class for a given divisor. A technical way to say this is that the remainder classes modulo b form a partition of the integers. A most important fact about partitions is that it is possible to define an equivalence relation from a partition. That is, a relationship between pairs of numbers which acts in all the important ways like the equals relationship. Recall from the previous lesson, below we have the remainder classes modulo five. Where the remainder class for r equals zero is the set of integers when divided by five, the remainder is zero. The remainder class for r equals one is the set of integers when divided by five, the remainder is one, and so on. If two numbers belong to the same remainder class, then in some way they are the same. That is, they are the same when dividing by b. In the case where b equals five as above, the numbers eight and 23, while not the same number, are the same when it comes to dividing by five because both have remainder three. Notice both eight and 23 are in the remainder class for r equals three. It matters what the divisor is. Eight and 23 are the same when dividing by five, but are not the same when dividing by seven. Since eight has remainder one when divided by seven, and 23 has remainder two when divided by seven. With all this in mind, let's introduce some notation. We want to say that eight and 23 are basically the same, even though they are not equal. It would be wrong to say eight equals 23. Instead, we write eight is congruent to 23, but this is not always true. It works if we are thinking about division by five, so we need to denote that somehow. What we actually write is this. Eight is congruent to 23 mod five, or eight is congruent to 23 modulo five. It's also true that eight is not congruent to 23 mod seven, again, because when dividing by seven, eight and 23 do not have the same remainder. And now let's give a formal definition of congruence modulo n. We say a is congruent to b modulo n, and write a is congruent to b mod n, provided a and b have the same remainder when divided by n. In other words, provided a and b belong to the same remainder class, modulo n. Many books define congruence modulo n slightly different, but the definitions are equivalent. Using congruence and divisibility, we can state for any integers a, b, and n, we have a is congruent to b mod n, if and only if n divides a minus b. In other words, the two numbers are congruent modulo n if their difference is a multiple of n. It is also useful to switch back and forth between congruences and regular equations. We know that a is congruent to b mod n if and only if n divides a minus b, if and only if a minus b is equal to kn for some integer k. Notice the equation is just stating the difference of a and b is some multiple of n. Rearranging that equation, we get a equals b plus k times n. In other words, if a and b are congruent modulo n, then a is b more than some multiple of n. This also indicates that all the numbers in a particular remainder class are the same amount larger than the multiples of n. Let's look at a concrete example. Let's go back to eight and 23, which we know are congruent mod five. Eight is congruent to 23 mod five, if and only if five divides eight minus 23, which is five divides negative 15, which of course is true, and if and only if eight minus 23 is equal to k times five, meaning eight minus 23 is some multiple of five for some integer k. And notice eight minus 23 is negative 15, and negative 15 is equal to negative three times five. We can also state if eight is congruent to 23 mod five, then eight is 23 more than some multiple of n. Notice eight is equal to negative 15 plus 23, where negative 15 is a multiple of five. I think we'll stop here on this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll talk about properties of congruence. I hope you found this helpful.